Thanks, Sam, for joining us and uh, showing us your range of jigsaw jumps. Um, I guess the first question is, how did they come about? Yeah, thanks for having me, Shane. Um, it was all because of lockdown, actually. Uh, I was living in Melbourne last year during um, lockdown when I really wanted to go ride my bike and there were no trails within five kilometres. So um, I tried going to the local park and that wasn't very fun on a mountain bike. So I decided I was going to build myself a ramp that I could take to the park. Um, then they brought in the rule about not being allowed to drive to go and exercise. So I decided to come up with a ramp that I could um, ride to the park with um, on my bike. So I had to fit it in a backpack. And at the time I got the biggest backpack I could find, which was <laughs> an Uber Eats delivery bag that I got from a friend. And I figured out you know, the biggest sections of plywood that would fit in that backpack and then worked out how to make them connect together without needing any tools because I didn't want to be carrying a toolkit to the park so instead of using screws or hinges or anything I worked out how to make the pieces fit together like a jigsaw puzzle uh, and I actually cut it with the jigsaw uh, by hand in my backyard at home. So is that um, where the name came plywood. from then? Yeah that was it like it was the best way I could come up with to make the pieces of wood fit together um, and be strong and yeah, it worked like a jigsaw puzzle, it was made with a jigsaw, and so jigsaw jumps just um, sprung to mind and the name stuck. <laughs> so they're not going to start calling you Mr. Jigsaw. Oh, yeah, some people do. <laughs> I've been called worse things, though. <laughs> so um, why three sizes, and um, can you explain each of them? Yeah, oh, actually. Oh, four sizes, sorry. Yeah, there's four sizes, but one of them is kind of an oddball, so I'll get to that in a minute. I mean, basically, I've done a range of different sizes because when I, you know, initially I was just building one ramp for myself to use at the park, thinking that lockdown was just going to be short. <laughs> um, but every time I used it at the park, different people would see it and they're all like, yeah, I want one too. That'd be so cool. Um, and just seeing how interested kids were as well. They'd watch me riding over the jump and they'd want to go on it too. But the first ramp that I built could only be made in one size. Like... Once it was fully assembled, it was really strong. And I was amazed at how good it was and how much pop it had. But you couldn't adjust it. So I decided to make ramps that were adjustable so that people who weren't experienced riders could um, learn on it and practice and grow. So that's where I came up with the modular system to be able to make each one adjustable. And also a range of sizes um, because I could see that with different bikes with different size wheels, um, that would make a big difference to the sorts of angles they could go over and the height of a jump they could do. Um, so I'll, I'll talk through the range one by one. Um, so yeah, effectively we've got three sizes of the same thing, which is the junior, which is small, the medium and large. And then the fourth thing is the pocket rocket. And I'll talk about the pocket rocket last because it doesn't quite follow the same formula as all the rest. Um, but starting with the junior, this one's made so that um, small kids, like I'm talking ages three and up, can ride on this one. Um, and with the three different stages I mentioned, so this is all put together in stage three, so that's the biggest one that this one goes. But you can easily undo the elastic, take a section off, and then start off really small and easy. So that's the stage one two-way roller. So little kids on balance bikes, you just cruise over it one way, turn around and go back the other way. Um, and then once I've gotten the hang of that, you can add stage two. So you just flip that over. And you see also on the underside here, it's got shapes carved out. So when it's time to pack it up, it's just like a jigsaw puzzle for the kids. That's only on the junior, isn't it? Only on the junior, yeah. Because um, the junior is the only ramp where the side pieces are small enough to fit inside the top pieces exactly like that. So, And it's got squares and triangles that match up with the squares and triangles on the ramp pieces and circles. So even if they don't know numbers, if they know shapes, the kids can help and um, they have a lot of fun. Some kids enjoy putting it away more than they do <laughs> actually riding it. Actually, people can see a video of that, can't they, on your um, Instagram account of a kid actually um, packing up? Yep, yep, that's right. And as soon as he um, finished packing up the junior, he looks over at the large, he's like, oh, let's do that one too. <laughs> um, 
So this is set up in stage two and you can also use that top piece as a down ramp. So um, yeah, your, your smaller kids, balance bikes, little BMXs, they can roll over that. And then once they've gotten really good at that and started to learn how to hop a bit, then you can add on stage three, that's one with the circles. And now it becomes a little straight ramp. So with this one, because there's no down slope, they actually need to jump off it. Yep. So that's when it turns from a roller into a jump. Um, and put the elastics on. So once they outgrow the junior, then they might want to move on to the medium, which just like the junior is a three stage ramp, but actually I'll put them side by side so you can compare. that's still in the shot. So you see three stages, but each stage is quite a bit bigger. And with the medium, it starts to angle up a bit. So it gives you a little bit of kick, because the junior is more of a straight ramp. Um, so with the medium, you can also do the trick of going down to a stage one two-way roller a little bit bigger than the junior one. You can also do a stage two rollable jump um, and then you've got your stage three kicker. So that gives you lots of flexibility. But the cool thing is if they started off with the junior and then they get the medium, don't throw away the junior because you can use that as... Um, so the stage two medium which you can have as a roller, like that, is also the same height as the junior. So if they're wanting to, um, there's also a, another um, joiner piece coming in the future, which connects your medium to your junior to make a tabletop. Or you could use your junior as a landing and the medium as a takeoff. So you can do a gap jump. For the daredevils. For the daredevils, yeah. But uh, it's called the mini joiner, the piece that connects those two together. Um, and that will be coming in the next couple of months. So then we should compare the medium and large. Um, oh, the other thing with the medium is it's designed so that when it's packed up, it's about the size of this square and it goes in a backpack. So being that small, um, it's 40 centimetres by 40 centimetres, so that'll fit on the back of a 10 year old and up if they're wanting to wear it as a backpack and ride their bike with the ramp on. Um, and then the large, similar sort of um, three stage modular design, except it's taller, but it's steeper as well. So if we how are we going to see them? Put that one there and bring the large over next to it. You'll see. So each of these sections is longer, but that angle is quite a bit steeper. So it's got a lot more kick. Um, so to ride on the large, you really do need to know how to pop it well. Um, but again, you can take it away and make it a little two-way roller to start with. The stage two of the large is a bit steeper than the medium stage two. So if we move that out of the way. So I fairly like the way you're manhandling them, they're easy to move around. Yeah, yeah, totally. And actually to make it even easier, if you want to move it from one spot to the other or put it in the car without packing it up, is you can just unhook those back elastics, fold that in, and then that, you can put it straight in the boot of most cars without having to pack it down flat. Yep. But, you know, flat packing it only takes a minute anyway, yeah. so you can do it either way. Um, yeah, that's your large in stage two. And then stage three. And coming very soon as well, um, there's extensions, so you can add a fourth section when you add the fourth section on the junior, actually I can show you 
how that would look in a sec. Oops. Yeah, the ground's not the flattest here. <laughs> there we go. So with the Junior, there's an extension for that called the J+, Plus. the Medium has an extension called the M+, Plus, and the Large has an extension called the L+, Plus. and in each one it adds a fourth section that makes it higher and steeper. Um, the Junior's J+, Plus is actually very similar size and shape to the Medium Stage 3, so once you've got your J+, Plus on there, if they outgrow that, then you can also get the M+. Plus. So oh, you could actually expand it twice if they grow that much. So that's the, the three core models, which are basically small, medium, large, junior being the small. Then we've got the pocket rocket. Now, um, yeah, this one's really popular for freestyle BMX, um, guys with dirt jumpers. Even though it looks really small, um, it's quite a steep angle. If we see that next to the junior, you see it's shorter, but it's way steeper. Um, so this one really boosts you up if you pop off it. It's also quite narrow. And the reason it's been made that way is so that it's the most compact one. Um, I'll just pack it down real quick. With this one, you can't do it as a two-way roller like the others, but you can do it as um, this one with a sort of steep downslope if you want to just practice rolling over it before you pop. But I'll show you just how small it goes. And you see, like a jigsaw puzzle, all the pieces just pull apart. So it's really quick and simple. Um, they all come with instructions as well that show you how to. Um, take them apart and put them together. And so that's it. Um, it's got straps to hold it together. But that little bundle is about, um, it's less than four kilograms. And that'll go in a typical school bag or backpack. You can ride to the park after school and set it up and jump. Um, but it, yeah, even though it's small, it's not intended for kids that are as young as the junior. This one's for um, more like older kids, teenagers, adults, anyone who likes a, a short, steep jump that for urban riding, you can use it for getting up onto features, uh, wall rides. Um, or also, if you want something that's nice and small to take out on the trail, then you put it on top of other features. So you can use it as a step up, or you can put it on top of a dirt jump to make it extra steep. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's the basic range. And as I said, there's extensions and tabletops in the works that'll be released pretty soon. You said they're pretty easy to care for? Yeah, yeah, so they're really durable. The sides are made out of structural form ply. So you've got a waterproof film on the face. And um, the only thing you need to be careful of is because the sides are natural um, wood, you can't leave them out in the rain. So. You pack them up after each use. You see they pack down flat and you can store them away so it's easy to keep them out of the weather. Um, but you know, if it's a little bit wet on the ground, the, the top surface is a non-slip um, textured plywood. Um, don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera, but that's, uh, yeah, it's got the, the texture built into it so it grips really nicely. Um, and I've got one example of the backpack system. This is the large ramp, so that whole big ramp there packs up into a bundle like this. Um, the backpack's an optional extra, because some people say that they just want to put it in the boot of their car so they don't need the backpack. But this does give you the ability to wear it when you ride your bike. And it's got a waist strap and a sternum strap to make it so if you do 
go over a bump while you're riding, it's not going to fly up and hit you in the back of the head, it keeps it nice and secure. Um, and so yeah, you can order the backpack as well through the website when you order the ramp. Uh, actually, with the backpacks as well, there's a, a smaller harness, very similar to the large, um, for the medium. There's also a harness for the pocket rocket, and the junior gets um, its own special backpack. So it's really easy to put all the pieces in that and zip it up. So what kind of terrain do you see people using these? Oh. Pretty much everything? Yeah, so only sort of limited by their imagination. Um, yeah, the well, yeah, you can use features um, like hills and things uh, to either make the takeoff steeper and bigger, or if you're getting into the bigger ramps, the large and the L plus, because they send you up quite steep, you need a, a downslope to land on. So you set it up in front of a hill and land on yep. the backside. Um, you have to be a bit selective with the terrain though because all of the legs need to be supported um, if it's over a, a dip or uneven surface then it might not have full support all over it so you do just need to adjust it and get it so that everything's stable um, but they're super strong so like you can <laughs> Test it to make sure it's stable before you um, <laughs> launch off it. You've driven cars over these things too, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, we've done some uh, strength testing. You can see on our Instagram or Facebook page. Uh, yeah, they have been driven over and we've had um, an engineering lab has tested them to uh, yeah, prove that they are very strong. Uh, what kind of price range are we looking at? Um, so... Yeah, the price is really determined by the amount of material that goes into them. Um, the Junior is starts at two ninety nine on our website for the ramp only, um, and then there's the Pocket Rocket, which is two sixty nine. Uh, even though it's a bigger, steeper jump than the Junior, it's smaller pieces uses less plywood, so we can do that one a bit cheaper. Um, then the Medium is. 389 from memory and the large is 479 and for each of those the harness is another um, 70 bucks or so and that yeah makes it super portable so if someone gets it wrong and i don't know ends up losing a part or breaking a part are they easy to replace you do you have parts for people to buy if they ever need them yeah yeah that's right if uh, people just send us an email and we'll have the parts available for sale if yeah, anyone needs a spare part, then that's definitely going to be available through the website. It's all at jigsawjumps.com. Um, can't think of anything else for you. Uh, uh, do you want me to grab the extensions and I could show you yeah, let's how have we a, can make them even bigger? Let's have a preview of that. That'd all right. Um, I'll just grab them out of the car. All right. So what I have here is the L Plus extension for the large. So I'll sit that there. So obviously these don't fit into the bags as well, do they? So they'd have to be separate. Well, actually the M Plus, you can fit it in the same right. harness. So the harness has been designed to have straps that are adjustable length. So the medium harness, let's see, got it over here. So this is the medium harness, which is the harness part of it is identical to the large. The only difference is the rain cover for it and if you want to take the m plus with your medium you just um, roll up the rain cover and tuck it away and you can still strap the m plus can go here on top of your medium and you just adjust your straps to fit all oh, right so you know You'd have the medium here as well, yep. so it would be a bit thicker, but just to illustrate the point. And yeah, that's why there's so much adjustment in these straps. So you've got that versatility. If you buy the medium first, you can always add the M plus later on. And like I said, you can't um, fit the cover over it, so I'd just tuck it in there. But yeah, you can totally 
still wear that and ride with it. The large, the L Plus though, is a different story. <laughs> that has gotten so big that um, if you were to wear that on your back, it would either be so long that it might hit your back wheel or so wide that you take off people's wing mirrors when you're riding past. So this one you've got to put in the boot of the car. But you'll see, it's still, you know, pretty light for what it is. Yeah, it is. And, um, yeah, you'll see in a sec how big it makes this jump. Hopefully it's going to fit in the camera. <laughs> so they're held together with these um, shot clock straps um, from a, a brilliant Aussie company called Original Shot Clock. Um, such a good way for bundling things together. So we just pull the cord out. Now the L-Plus got so big that I've cut it in half and hinged it so that it folds down. So we just unfold that. Then just like the way the others assemble, you just put the puzzle joint in and it just slides down to lock into place. So do that with this one as well. And then we just line it up next to this and comes in from the side. So basically this makes your ramp go from large to huge. <laughs> How do you come up with all the different angles? Um, basically by sketching it out, trying, I'd make them out of core flute first, try the different angles, see if it looked right. Then I'd cut one out of plywood, ride on it, see <laughs> if it felt right, and then adjust it and just go through it. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a bit over a year from building the first ramp to launching um, our four main products on the market. and. Yeah, and also taking them out and getting other people to ride them and getting mm. feedback from people about what um, what geometry they'd like to see. Um, but yeah, the L Plus has been designed, I don't know if you get a good shot of the, the profile of it, but that um, fourth section is even steeper than the one before it. Um, so it's ideal for guys wanting to do 360s and 180s and big whips and things. Um, and like as you can see, even though it's quite a big unit now, if you're wanting to pick it up and move it, you can still just lift it and move it to another spot. So that's your L plus. And then the M plus is pretty similar but scaled down. Those straps were awesome, they beat the old hockey straps, don't they? Oh, yeah, so good. And yeah, I found a thousand and one uses for them since <laughs> I got them for this. I use them on my bike rack, on the roof rack. Um, yeah, awesome Aussie product. So I love supporting locals, local businesses as well, like myself. And all of the, the shock cord as well is all um, Aussie made. Um, and it's UV stabilized, waterproof rubber core marine grade shot cord so it will last a very long time so that one so I just lift it up and in the fourth section On there. There it is, you feel it click into place once you get everything lined up. Put on your elastic. And so this now makes your medium as big as a large. So it's an awesome way if um, yeah, if you start off with just the medium ramp and then the rider progresses or grows up and they're ready for something bigger then 
you can add that and without having to buy you. a whole new ramp. Yeah, don't have to buy a whole new ramp. Um, I did notice on the faces of each of the sections, you got a little hole down the bottom corner. Is that for pegging it down? That's right. Oh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you've got tent pegs at home and you're wanting to give it that extra level of stability, you can use pegs um, all the way through. And there's also holes in this. Um, Oh, yeah. on the deck plate so yep. yeah you can peg it down um, there's generally not a need uh, yeah. if you're using it on um, grass or dirt so the the plywood's angled in such a way that once you ride over it or jump on it it sort of pushes into the dirt a bit and it means the force of the bike going forwards is resisted by that digging into the ground yeah so basically the harder you go the more it digs in and it um, stays really stable. You put a lot of thought into the assembly. Yeah, no, thank you. It's yeah, it's been a an ongoing pro process of development. Um, so I'm just so stoked to finally have them on the market and be able to yeah share them with lots of people. Um, I don't actually have the J Plus with me, but I can show you exactly what it would look like because, as I mentioned, it's the same size as the stage three medium. So I'll move this one out of the way. Let's say you've got a a three year old on their balance bike and they start off with the junior and then maybe when they're five and get into BMX racing, they want something a bit bigger. You could get the J plus extension, which fits on there like that. Um, and actually if you buy the J plus kit, it also gives you the option of using that one as a downslope. So then I've even got a bigger roller to practice on first and then move on to the J plus. Like that and then as they get uh, bigger and better at riding then you've got the option of buying the M plus that can go on their J plus so <laughs> the one ramp that can really can really grow with the rider and take them all the way from that little stage one two-way roller on the junior all the way up to something that is as big as a large. If I come around this side, that's easier. So. Yeah, there we go, it's the, the five stage ramp. Seems to have a nice kick to it. Yeah, well that's it, because it's got the same takeoff angle as the, the medium and M plus. It uh, yeah, and it gives you a nice long run in too. Awesome. I can't think of any other questions. I think I'm done now. Yeah, cool. About yeah, time to go for a ride. Yeah, yeah, well let's let's hit them. Yeah. Um yeah. There's a lot to take in because it is a big range, but yeah. on our website we've got a comparison chart and you're also welcome to email me if you've got any questions about what's best for um, for your riding style or the age of the rider. Um, our email address is sendit at jigsawjumps.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, thanks very much for joining us. No worries, man. Thanks for having me. Awesome.